All right, uh, today we're going to create uh, a sort of a, like a squishy squash and stretch kind of a rig uh, that's you know synonymous with the ubiquitous fundamental animation tutorials. I'm sure you've all seen bouncing ball, uh, squash and stretch, cartoony style. So uh, it's going to be a, quite a basic rig and very easy to, to set up, but uh, it'd be a great little rig to use to uh, to practice those um, fundamental animation techniques principles so uh, we're just going to start here with a box and um, I'll just uh, right click here on the spinners to uh, zero in world space zero without and uh, I'm going to give it two length width and height segments right so next we'll go over the shapes and this will be obviously a squishy box and um, we're just going to create the control objects now so I'll just name this uh, squishy right so for the control objects you can just select circle and if you want now it's, it's up to you you can uh, enable it in the viewport to give it some thickness to make it easier to see or else you can leave it just as a, as an outline so um, We'll just create this first one here. Just drag it. You make them a, a, as big as you like, but obviously you want to make them so that you can grab them easily when you're animating. So uh, I'm just gonna give that an orange color, and we will maximize the viewport. So just one more thing I want to do. Just want to turn off. Um, sorry. So I'm going to turn off display select with edge faces because sometimes it annoys me. Alright, so I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to right click zero out this into world space and we will call this one CTR control bottom. Right, I'll just go into it front view. Is that to zoom in here for front view? <coughs> Sorry. Right, so that's control bottom. I'm just gonna drag up and this will be control middle. Let's turn on the wireframe again, move it slightly up, and then one more time. And this is gonna be control top. So these are gonna be our control objects we'll use to manipulate and animate the mesh. Alright, so that's control top. Um next let's get rid of the grid and change it to shaded right next now I'm going to select squishy and uh, I'm going to assign the, um, the skin modifier and click this edit envelopes and we're going to add I'm going to add these control objects as the bones in the skin modifier <coughs> so add them in don't mind all that craziness uh, that's just uh, the default envelopes so we will just select check this box to uh, enable vertex selection vertex selection and down here to the uh, the weight tool floating dialog <coughs> sorry okay so I'm just gonna select all the verts and just go through and zero them all out so we can start fresh so zero zero on the middle bone and zero on the bottom bone so all the weights are zeroed out now so next I'll just select the verts that will be attached to this bottom controller so we're on bottom here verts are selected and we just say uh, one and you can see the influence that's the red is the strongest influence and grey is zero influence right so now we go to uh, the top and they should have been zeroed out so we'll zero them out and then we'll just select these and uh, give them one and the middle we will give we'll say 0.5 so I just want to have a look now so there's the bottom top middle so um, I just want to test that out really quick so we can just grab 
our control objects. And you can see now we have them. Um, the bottom and the top controls are one. I just want to play with some of the, the skin weights here. Go back into edit envelopes, and you can see there now that the bottom one is affecting it more than the top one. So if I go back to the top, let's see, no, it's about the same. And the middle, maybe I'll select the middle vert 0.5. Go back out again now. Now what I'm going to do next, actually, to get a better idea of how the uh, the rig is going to deform, I'm just going to add a sub. Uh, I'm just going to subdivide the mesh basically. So I'm on max uh, 2015 extension one. So uh, I have the. Um, I've only actually just started using it today. I have the open subdiv modifier here. Uh, you can you know have it. You can know you can use turbo smooth from previous versions so we'll just um, have a look now and see how it's affecting yeah looks pretty good now obviously you can scale as well because whenever you're animating obviously you want to maintain volume so let's say for instance you know, you squash down while well, the volume isn't being maintained here. So, you know, you could scale these two out then. So it's going to obviously maintain the volume. Right, so we'll just control Z, undo back to here, and now we'll create a. I'm just going to create a kind of a master control here. So, um, We'll just drag out another spline circle and this time uh, I'm going to um, bring the steps down just to change the shape and delineate it as a different control object and we'll just change the colour, whatever colour you want to choose there, whatever floats your boat. I'll just uh, bring up the radius and same again, just zero it out in world space. We want to grab the three control objects, we'll just sorry, we'll just call this one. CTRL master. Now you want to grab these three control objects and up here select the link tool and just link them to the master. So you know you can move the master around and they'll follow. And obviously the mesh is following these because it's attached to the skin modifier. Right, so well that's that's basically it. That's basically the uh, squishy rig very easy to set up now one other thing you want to make sure to do is just grab all the control objects and uh, hold down alt and right click in the quad menu just freeze transforms this warn will come up just say yes and then alt right click again and set a skin pose and say yes again so now you know we've set that as the skin pose so you know, if you're animating and you find that your rig's gone crazy, you can always just I'll just filter this out the shapes. You can always just select hold down alt, right click with all the control objects selected and just assume skin pose and it'll just revert back to the state that it was in when you set that skin pose. So that's actually a very important step. Another thing you can do while you have all these control objects selected it's just a uh, pig iron here. You can just create a new set once you've them selected, and you click this create new set. They'll all automatically be added here. So we'll just say controls, or controls. And you open it up there. You can see they're all in there. And then when you do go to anime, if you just come down here, your selection says here. So this will key all your control objects that are in that selection group or you can set it to select it and just do them individually but uh, I might do a little video on, on, on animating this this bloke a basic sort of a bouncing ball type animation so I'll probably do one of them but uh, one more thing I want to do I'll probably actually do it in another video because we're nearly at 10 minutes I'll just show you real quickly in the next one how to add a um, 
a tail or an antenna, an antenna or ponytail or whatever. It's just when you're animating, it, it, it's usually used in these practice exercises to to animate second reaction. It's just one of the principles. So as the you know as the ball's bouncing along, the uh, antenna is or whichever it is, tail or ponytail, is being animated. It's like it's called second reaction. It's it's a secondary sort of an animation. Uh, due to the bounce and motion of the ball you know uh, your second reaction is going to be affected by that so uh, uh, yeah we'll stop this one here and we'll do another one then on, on creating a simple uh, tail alright cheers thanks good luck